you guys and welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here welcome 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 my name is Avon and I am super excited to have you now as you can tell by the title of this video this is going to be about my casting process and getting on to Big Brother I am literally about to give you guys all the tea from start to finish of what it took for me to get cast onto this show literally from the moment when I decided, okay, I'm going to go to the open call and send in my audition tape all the way until them dropping me off at the hotel in order to be sequestered. So now without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. So get your cups and let's go. All of these detours, I cannot be sure if this is the right way, but I stay on pace. Yeah, I'm on my way. Uh, tell them I'm on my way. On my way, on my way, on my way. I'm on my way, on my way. Tell them I'm gonna get this show. Okay, so if you watch the show, then you already know my background and being a super fan and watching the show with my grandmother and how, you know, she wanted me to audition. And so when she passed away, I decided, okay, whatever, I'm gonna go ahead and audition for the show. So the first thing I did was sit in an audition video. Child, the struggle. <laughs> I recorded the video in my bathroom on my Android and, um, it was a mess. Oh my God, it was a mess. I had, oh, I was stumbling over my words. I had airplanes flying all in the background. Cadence was making noise in the background. People was outside talking. Like, it was a shit show. But I told them in the video, I said, this is my life. This is it. What you hearing is what's going on. I said, so I'm not gonna re-record this shit. I'm gonna send this as is, raw and uncut. This is me. So <laughs> I sent it in. And this was like a week or two before the open call. Now, I had already knew after sending in that shit show, I had to go show them my face because that couldn't be the lasting impression that I sent them. Like, they needed to see my face. So, and that's, an, that's something that I would give as a tip or advice. Always go to the open call. Like, it's so much more personal for them to see your face and feel your energy up close rather than through a video. Like... It's just, it, it's a total different feeling for the cast and director to be able to really feel your energy up close and personal while you're right there. So, um, y'all, I bought this new lotion from Bath and Body Works. Oh my God. It's called, um, I forgot, but it got a big ass sunflower on the front and it's like a yellow ooh, bomb. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> anyway, so I go to the open call and when I tell you guys the line was wrapped around the corner, down the block, up the street, all the way to East Europe some damn where, okay? It was a long ass line and it was hot, okay? I was just like, oh my gosh, there's so many people here. Now, let me go ahead and address this because I know some of you guys are wondering how many black people were there, Davon, because they say we don't come out in numbers. And I'm gonna be all the way honest with you guys. There was me, there was this other young lady who became like my line buddy. Like she was in line with me and that was my part no okay if we got cast together the alliance was already made right then and there she had these dreads she was dark skin she was gorgeous she looked like uh michonne from the walking dead that's what i was calling her so it was her um i saw about three or four african-american men and um i think that was it y'all that's literally all i can remember i can't speak of who was like behind me but with me and own up that's literally all i remember so it wasn't that many of us there now i don't know if they came after the fact because i went early i was like i got the shit out so i don't know if you know some came later on but at my open call from what i saw it wasn't that many of us there but anyway <laughs> so we're standing in line as we're standing in line everybody is just kind of like talking about the show discussing their favorite players i i, 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 I ain't saying shit like, y'all need to know none of my nothing because I might end up in the house with y'all and y'all don't need to know nothing. So, in my mind, I ain't even been cast yet. But the game had already started. Like, that's how much I love this game. The damn game has started while I'm in line auditioning, okay? They don't even know who the hell I am yet and I'm already playing. So, at this point, everybody in line is pretty much just sizing each other up, you know, 
just, I guess, playing the what if game in their head. Like, what if I get cast with you? What if I get cast with you? I'm just chilling. Like, I'm trying to get this shit over with so I can go across the street and get me a burger because it was this burger place across the street and they were frying these burgers up. And when I tell you that shit smelled so good, I'm like, oh, I'm tempted to stay to hell with this audition and just go give me a burger, some fries, and then come back later. So <laughs> that's where my mind was. I wasn't really worried about who was around me. So then this chick came around and she was doing interviews. And so she asked me if I wanted to do an interview. And I'm like, I'm the one that's not even really doing all the talking. Like, it's people here with huge personalities that are, you know, why not interview them? And they were like, well, we just want to interview you. And I'm like, okay. So <laughs> they interviewed me and, you know, they asked me about strategy. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to say that in front of these people. Like, it was a lot of shit that I kept concealed because the interview was right in front of all the people auditioning, you know? So I think I had said something about, um, I wanted to be the first African American to win the show. And I think that was pretty much the most, oh, they asked me about my favorite players and I told them, you know, Dan, Danielle. And, um, yeah, that pretty much was that. And so I get in there finally, after standing in line for hours, I finally get inside and it's a group of us and it was about maybe six or seven of us. And we come in and we sit down and we wait for our turn to go to a table. So finally, it's our turn to get to the table. We get to the table. The casting director is sitting like in a booth, like by himself. Like he was just like chilling in the cut. Like he was the man, like the, the damn king of Wakanda, some shit. Like he was sitting there like he was the man with the plan. So I had my headshot in my hand and I was standing there with my group. And um, the first thing he says is, say your name. So everybody goes around and they say their names. And then he goes, great. Now tell me in this group, who would you vote to evict? And so everybody went around saying who they would vote to evict. Nobody said my name. Not one person in the group said my name. The casting director comes to me and he goes, well, who would you vote to evict? And it was like one dude who was in our circle. And I was like, I would vote to evict him. And he was like, why? And I was the only person that he asked why. And so um, I was like, because, you know, everybody here said hi to me when we were in line. He was the only person who didn't speak. So if you can't speak, bye. And like, that was it. He was like, okay, you guys, thank you so much for coming out. Um, you'll know within an hour if we want to call you back for another round. If not, thank you so much for coming. And that was it. And, you know, I still got my uh, headshot in my hand because I'm shook. I'm like... Did we answer wrong? Like, you know, what's up? So I'm walking away and I'm like, damn, I didn't get that. And so um, I was like, well, you know what? Damn, still go back and give him your headshot because you might, you, you never know what else they might be auditioning for. So I went back to the table and I took my headshot and I was like, here, this for you. And I slid it across to him and he never looked down at my headshot. He never picked it up. He kept his eyes on me, kept a straight face, and didn't blink, did nothing. And so I walked away like, <laughs> I walked away. So I get home, and maybe an hour after I had been home, my phone ring, and it's an unknown number. And, you know, I don't answer unknown numbers. I just, uh-uh. If you unknown, you unanswered. Understand that. So <laughs> I let it ring, and I didn't get a voicemail. It rang again. And I'm like, Devon, you did go to an audition, so it might be for that. So I answer the phone, and sure enough, it's them. And so they're like, hey, is this Devon? I'm like, yes. They're like, are you, you know, in a private area where you're allowed to talk? And I'm like, yeah, I am. And I'm like, what? And so then they tell me who they are, you know, the casting people from Big Brother. And they say, you know, we really liked you, and we would like to get to know more about you, so we're inviting you to come out to our second round of auditions. And so I'm like, okay. All right. So they give me an address of the location where I need to meet them. And I start screaming on the phone. Like, I start yelling. I was yelling in that lady's ear so loud. Like, oh, poor lady. I was screaming so loud in her ear. I was super excited. So she gave me the information, and then we got off the phone. So I get to the location. And when I tell y'all everything is top secret, hush, hush, be quiet, everything is confidential. Like, I wasn't even allowed to say my name when I got there. I checked in with the front desk, and I had to check in as DR. And the front desk knew that DR, Devon Rogers, was coming for something. They didn't even know what. They just knew that I was showing up and to tell me to sit in the lobby. So I was instructed to sit in the lobby and wait for the young lady to come out and get me. She comes out, she gets me, she takes me into this room. I go into the room, 
and there's a camera and a chair and she tells me to sit in the chair so I sit in the chair which is in front of the camera and this is clearly the on camera round of the interviews they want to see you know are you going to freeze up on camera is your personality going to be able to shine and show through and as you guys can see from my channel like I'm not afraid of a camera I'll sit there and I'll talk for hours you know if I you know feel like expressing myself I'm going to say what I have to say so back up let me back up for a minute when I sent in my audition video, there's a um, an audition application that you fill out where you do your um, about me, who am I, and how many seasons have I saw, am I a fan of the show, and they ask you all these questions or whatever. Well, she had that application printed out there. So she was asking me questions from my application. So she was asking me about my job. She was asking me about my daughter and my family. She was asking me about um, my favorite season and, you know, different stuff like that. My relationship with my grandmother and how, you know, when my grandmother passed, it encouraged me to audition for the show and stuff like that. So, um, tip, when answering the questions that they give you, don't just yes or no or don't just yes or no with a brief little clip attached to your response like no go into full details because what clicked in my mind was yes the show is about competition it's about strategy and you know playing the game and things like that but a large portion of the show is about that damn diary room you know so when you're doing these interviews and they're asking you these questions they want to make sure that you can recall and proper properly and effectively tell a story and take the the, the viewers on a journey with you you know what i mean so when she would ask me like um Let's say she asked me, so you're a poker dealer. How do you feel or do you feel like your job has prepared you to be able to deal with the situation of being in the house? And rather than saying, yeah, you know, my job definitely prepared me to be in this house with all of these people. Or rather than saying, yeah, you know, my job, I deal with people from all over the world. So being in a house with people that are from all over the world should be a piece of cake for me. Mm -mm, neither of those. What I said was, Oh yeah, girl, I'm a poker dealer. I deal with people from all over the world. You know, inside of the casino, you got drinks and you got money and you got gambling. So it's all kind of hell going on. Girl, I remember this one time, this drunk dude came over to my table. He was tall, Caucasian. He had this thick ass beard, thick ass mustache. You know, he had his hat on. He kind of looked like a real life Yosemite Sam, like standing in my face. So anyway, he sit at my table and then I proceeded to tell her the story of what happened. You get what I'm saying? Now I'm taking her on the journey and she gets to follow me with the story. So she's getting an idea of how I'm going to be when I'm recalling the veto ceremony. I'm recalling the HOH competition. I'm recalling noms. I'm recalling an event that happened in the house. You get what I'm saying? They want to see that you're able to do these things. So with every answer that I gave, like not every single answer, but the majority, like the, 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 the thick questions that they asked me, I always made sure that I attached a story to it so that they knew I could take the viewers on the journey and I could captivate the audience and make them want to follow me through this ride. Went through that process, answered all her questions. Um, when I started talking about my granny and I started talking about my daughter, I started crying and she could tell that it was coming from a genuine place and I wasn't faking and pretending to be somebody I'm not. That's a big thing too. Don't go in there trying to be a character. Be yourself. You have to remember, these people see millions upon millions upon millions of different people, okay? So they've they've been doing this for so long they can differentiate when somebody is coming there genuinely being themselves or when somebody is coming in there trying to get cast you feel what i'm saying so go in there and really be yourself and because i was so genuine and so vulnerable about my stories about my grandmother and my daughter and the tears that came from my eyes the reason she was able to cry is because she was able to feel that it was coming from a genuine place and i was able to touch her nailed it so i leave I get home maybe I want to say like a week maybe a week or two later I got a phone call telling me that I made it to the finals and I was like what <laughs> I made it to the what the what <laughs> so I was 
was super excited. They told me that they were going to put me in a hotel and um, I was going to have to stay there for a week. And during that week is when I was going to have to go through psych evaluation and, you know, medical and go through the last rounds of interviews with the um, executive producers and shit like that. So I get to the hotel, let me keep my phone. So I'm all in the hotel taking selfies, taking pictures. Like I made it to my finals. You know, I couldn't like tag anybody or post it on social media or nothing like that. Cause everything is so hush hush, secret, secret. So, um, I get there and immediately they put me to work. I had to go take my psych evaluation. So when I went downstairs to take my psych evaluation, that was the first time I saw James. He was down there taking his test with me too, but every, because they didn't want us to, you're not allowed to speak at all. So they had us spread out. Like it was these like, like, you know, these long classroom desks. It was one here, a big ass gap, then another one, a big ass gap, then another one. And they literally had one of us at each of these big ass tables, but like one person sitting on this end, one sitting in the middle, one sitting on this end, one sitting over here. Like they had us spread out all across that room to where we could not talk to each other at all or barely make eye contact, barely do shit. You know, we were just that far apart. So I went through that. Um, I did my medical. They took my blood, took a urine sample, you know, ran all these tests to make sure I didn't have cooties and um, just make sure that I was, you know, good. And so, um, yeah, doctor came in, doctor did a full physical on me. He, I'm like, hold up, swell up with you, hold up. Like, he was, he was on it. I'm like, ugh. So, um, yes. And so now it's time for me to meet Robin. Robin comes to my room. And when Robin comes to my room, I start getting nervous. Cause I'm like, ooh, this shit is real. Like, these people that, like, the dude who did my initial, you know, at the casting call, I didn't know him, you know, it was like, and then the lady who did my filming, like, I didn't know her. So it was like, but then it's fucking Robin. Like, bitch, you are the one that pulled the string. So, damn. So when she walks in, I'm like, okay. So I start talking to her and we're having a conversation. And I find myself talking to her very professional, very, you know, like I'm in a job interview or some shit and she's looking at me real straight. Now, this is the thing about Robin. Let me make sure I say this. It's so hard for me to read like the shit people be saying about her online about this casting shit because if you pull the casting out of it and just Robin by herself, like she the coolest mother on the planet. Like she's so dope. Robin is down to drink and turn up. Like she's so cool. So anyway, we're in the room and we're talking and you know i start hearing her using profanity like you know robin is like yeah you know you done made it let's get this shit over with let's go in here let's knock this shit out and whoop -de whoop and just get this the fuck over with like <laughs> she really going in and so i'm like you know if you that comfortable with me let me go ahead and get comfortable with you so i start you know sit back in the seat i'm like yeah so whoop -de whoop -de whoop and i start talking to her like i'm talking to one of my friends and she goes that's what i was waiting for she said now when you go into these rounds of interviews it is very important for you to understand this is not a job interview like talk to us like you're talking to one of your friends like you're sitting at the bar having a beer having a drink and just having a conversation and when she said that I released everything and I was like, oh, you ain't said nothing but a word. I'm really about to get it y'all. Like I get it, my friends. So be prepared for all that is coming. She was like, I fucking love it. And so she gave me a hug and she left next day. I had to get up at crack of dawn o'clock and go and meet with the EPs. So, um, I get in front of them and this is when I thought I blew it, y'all. This is when I thought I had ruined my chances of getting on the show. A bitch got too comfortable, okay? I got way too comfortable. So um, I'm talking to Robin and the rest of the EPs, and I'm letting them know who I am. When, when you go through this, you're going to realize what your staples are. And when I say your staples, that, that means the stories that you're going to have to repeat throughout that week while you're at the hotel and you're meeting different people from CBS. You're gonna have to repeat these certain stories. So like my staples were me being a mom, my story about my grandmother, my job where I work, situations that have happened on my job, 
um, my strategy. Oh, that's a big thing too. When you get there, come there prepared with a strategy. My strategy captured everybody's attention because it was like, okay, so my strategy going into the house, I had like made this big ass board. It was like this poster board thing. And it was me, my ride or die and my main apple scrapple. Now me, I had final twos with both of them, but me and my ride or die, we were going to be on, um, opposite sides of the house. Like I needed my ride or die to be over there somewhere so they could collect information from the opposite side of the house while I got information from my side of the house and then we would compare notes. My main Apple Scrapple would be the person that was on my same side and we was just able to be in the same alliance and just thug it out and hold each other and hold each other down while in the same alliance together. That was my strategy going into the house. It didn't quite play out like that. By. Well, I mean, it, it almost did because the week that I was getting evicted, me and Audrey decided that if I stayed, because she even voted for me to stay, if I stayed in the house, that we would work together. And she was on the opposite side. So it could have worked because I had her on the opposite side and then I had Jason who was next to me who was in the same alliance with me. So it could have almost kind of Anyway, I'll talk more about that in my Big Brother 17 video. So I had the poster board, the visuals, and I told them, you know, the ride or die and the main apple scrapple shit cracked them up, especially when I was talking about my main apple. Um, it's very important for you to understand that throughout this process, you're going to be repeating those staple stories the whole time you're at the hotel. Like as you go through these different rounds or whatever, while you're there for that week, those stories are the stories that they're using to pitch you. You understand? So you're going to have to repeat these stories in front of a bunch of different people. So what I would do is I would go back to my hotel room after, you know, one of my meetings and I would think of, okay, what else can I attach to this story? Something real, not something like made up or fake or pulled out of the sky, but something real that I can, you know, add on to this story. So it's not like I'm just saying the same shit over and over and over. For example, like the story of, um, the Yosemite Sam guy who came and sat at my table. The end result of that story was um, he was racist and when he sat down, he called me a bunch of derogatory terms and was just throwing around racial slurs at me because I'm black and he didn't want me dealing him his cards or he didn't want me touching his chips, which is money. He didn't want me touching them at all. So it got really ugly and I just let them know how I handled it. So when I told that story once, my next meeting and I had to tell it again, I told it, but not as in depth, but I was like, yeah. And I was like, man. And then one time you deal with a lot of stuff. It was this lady who came in and she, and I'm start to talk about another story. You get what I'm saying? Layers. They want to see your layers and they want to see that you can recall stories. And I don't want to be boring and robotic. You know, if you tell a story a certain amount of times, at some point you become robotic. Like it's not even like the thrill or the fun of telling it anymore because you said it so many damn times. So I just wanted to give them layers. So yeah, anyway, this is when I thought I messed up. So <laughs> I got real comfortable. I'm at the end of the stretch. I get in front of Allison and the rest of them heads, like the head heads. I get in front of them and we're talking about how I don't like for people to sneeze and cough into the atmosphere without covering or, you know, nose to elbow, like, damn. Um, I'm talking about how I don't like that. And as I'm telling the story, because my story attached to that was I was in Target while I was pregnant with Cadence and I was going through the, you know, the part, well, mommies, you know, the part when your baby is almost coming. And so you just go through the house and you clean it like a crazy person. You just cleaning everything because, you know, your child is coming. Well, I got some Lysol and I'm walking up to the register and this guy sneezes like he's walking past me and he sneezes damn near in my face so I took the lights on I sprayed the shit out of him I sprayed the hell out of him like right in his face just shh, you lost your damn mind it not only is it me I have a whole human in my stomach and you finna sneeze in my face you lost your damn mind so I'm telling them that story and they're cracking up and as they're laughing at the story 
Allison sneezes. And she sneezes, she don't cover her mouth. And I said, oh, hell no, get her ass some Lysol. And when I said it, I was like, oh, Davon, did you really just say that shit out loud? But everybody in the room is cracking up. Robin done turned red. She laughing like hell. Allison is laughing. Everybody in there is cracking up. But in my mind, I'm like, did you really just tell these people to Lysol? Allison, bitch, Allison, of all people, you Allison? And so I thought it was over. So um, anyway, clearly it wasn't. They loved it. Apparently later on I found out that was kind of like the cherry on top that solidified me being cast. But um, they saw like, no, this is really who she is. Like, damn, that's really who she is. And so they loved it. So, um, yes, I go back to my hotel room. The week is over. I've done all of my paperwork. Um, the next thing is the waiting game. I go home and now it's time to wait. Back up for a minute. This is also the first time I saw Jason was at this particular round of interviews because before we went back there to go see Allison and all of them, we had to sit in this little holding room at CBS Studios. So we're, we're in the studios. Um, we're in the studios. We're in there in the building and um, we're sitting at the, this table and all of us are there. And I see Jason for the first time and like in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, I hope he get cast. I hope he get cast. I hope he get cast. And I'm super excited. But um, you can't say anything. Like you're not allowed to talk. And we were watching, um, what's that show with old girl from, um, from Scary Movie? Uh, the funny one, Cindy, what is her real name? Whatever her real name is, her show where it's her and her mom. Is it called Mom? My Mother? Our Mom? Where, whatever. That was on. And I was cracking up and they were getting mad because I kept laughing. But the shit was funny. Like, it was funny. Like, turn this off. Put on the news or something. That shit was funny. So, um, yeah, that was the first time I had seen Jason. Anyway, went through that round. Uh, thought I had flopped because I said the shit about Allison. But apparently... That was good? I don't know. So, um, get back to the hotel. It's time to pack my shit up and go home. I get home, and it's a dry patch for like a week and a half, maybe two weeks. It's a dry patch, and I don't hear anything. And so I'm like, fuck, you just had to tell them the lie saw the fucking executive producer, Davon. What are you thinking you just really had to tell them to lie saw her so i'm at the point now where i'm like okay i didn't get cast moving on you know sorry granny i tried whatever whatever get a phone call hey devon do you mind sending us some videos of you at home in your environment like show us you know you at work dealing poker show us some footage of you with your family you with your daughter with the woo so i'm like Okay, so, um, of course, I could not film inside of the casino, so what I did was I set up, like, a mock poker night in my house, and I had my uncles and my stepdad there, and I just, you know, I had on my uniform, my vest, and all of that, and, you know, I just, I was dealing. We had the, the cards, we had the chips, we had everything, like, everything was bomb, like, just sitting at the table, just dealing. And so I recorded that. I recorded me. I took Cadence to Chuck E. Cheese. So I recorded some footage of me and Cadence at Chuck E. Cheese. And then I recorded some footage of me racing with my little brothers. And then um, I used to play basketball. So I recorded some footage of me playing basketball or whatever against my brothers and beating them. And then um, I sent those videos in. Sent those videos in. Didn't hear anything for a little period of time, too. Next thing I know, I was getting a phone call that said, Hey, Devon, we're going to come and film you, you know, interacting with your family. Now, when we come to film you, make sure that you have three months of clothes set aside. Three months, approximately three months of clothes set aside so that we can have somebody to look through your wardrobe and just in case you get cast, they'll be able to say, okay, this outfit works, this outfit doesn't. This outfit works, this outfit doesn't. So make sure you have all of that stuff laid out for our people to look through. But congratulations, you've made it to the 50%. I was like, okay, like 50%, like I thought you was calling me to tell me I got cast. So <laughs> I'm packing my shit or whatever. And as I'm packing my stuff, I'm like, 
they find you about to get your key. Because I'm a fan of the show. I'm like, they find you finna get your key. They're finna come here. They're about to film me with y'all. And I'm about to get my key. So I tell my mom, like, get your shit, like, get it together. Like, you know, get cute, do your hair, do all that stuff. I get Cadence cute, whatever. I get cute. Like, everybody was nice in the video. And um, my mom was like, well, let's have a barbecue. I'm like, you want something right there. So <laughs> she barbecues all this. She barbecues and makes all this food. Production a good that day. Ha! Huh? So um, we're at the park and it starts to rain. So they're filming all of this footage of me. You know, if you saw the episode, you see I'm in the park with my brothers and I'm throwing the football. My stepdad is there. My mom is there. Caden's father was actually in the video too. Cadence was there, you know, and all of this stuff is happening and it's raining. And so y'all see me come over to the table. I lift up my plate. Boom, my key is there. But I kind of already knew that my key was going to be there. Let me tell you why I kind of already knew. The dude who was doing the sound was like, come here, I need to check your microphone, but you need to turn this way. And I'm like, okay. So he turned my back to everything that was happening behind me, my family and, you know, everybody else who was there from you know production and crew he turned my back away from them so he's literally taking my microphone y'all and doing this like he's not doing anything and he keeps looking over my shoulder and i'm like i'm not an idiot like i'm not like a professional when it comes to like tech shit but i know you're not doing anything so Hey, I guess somebody gave him the okay for me to be able to turn around. He was like, oh, okay, well, guess you're good to go. Can you say uh, one, two, three, four? And I was like, one, two, three. <laughs> what the fuck is that? What, what just happened? <laughs> God. Whew, false alarm. I am still alive, y'all. So um, I turn around <laughs> and I go over to my plate and, you know, that's when I saw my key. Boom, bow. Y'all saw how that played out. So they say, okay, you got your key. Now we want to get some footage of you at home packing your clothes. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. So we go back to my house and I start packing my clothes and, you know, I'm talking to the camera, just talking strategy and shit like that while I'm packing my clothes and how excited I am to have my key and all of that stuff. And so they're like, okay, we're going to record you putting your stuff in the car and we're going to record you saying goodbye to your family, you know, just in case, you know, we're going to record you saying goodbye to everybody. So I'm like, all right. So I'm saying goodbye to everybody and I'm giving everybody a kiss and I'm hugging and loving on everybody. And then they film us driving off and then we circle around the block and we come back. And then he says, okay, we're going to do it again. But this time you're not coming back. You're really leaving. And I don't know what it was about him saying that, but I lost it. I lo like I was prepared to go, but I wasn't prepared to go. You know what I mean? I was cool when I said bye to my mom. I was cool when I said bye to my brothers and my stepdad and, you know, Caden's dad. I was cool with all of that. But when it came time for me to say bye to my baby, y'all, I lost my shit. And that's when y'all see me crying and I'm holding her, talking to her. She sleeps as hell and I'm just like I'm losing it because you're prepared but you're not like I'm really I'm, whew, I'm losing it so I get in the car I, I hand her to my mom I get in the car I wave goodbye and they take me. All right, y'all, so that concludes this video. I just wanted to let you guys know what went down in my casting process and what it took in order for me to get cast onto Big Brother Season 17. So I hope I was able to say some things in this video and give some tips or advice so that when you go into your audition and you end up in those second and third rounds of casting, that you're able to use some of these tips and get on the show. Like, I can't wait to root for you guys in the upcoming seasons. Like, it's going to be so exciting. Um... If you liked this video, make sure you give me a like. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, what you waiting for, boo? Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, also, be on the lookout. I have two more Big Brother videos coming um, about my experiences on 17 and 18. And I'm going to go into detail about both seasons, meaning... Um, being on the show, the fights that happened within, the competitions that I flopped in, like all the tea on everything. And then I'm also going to talk about who I still talk to from each season and who I don't talk to from each season. Just a lot of tea. 
about both seasons. So be on the lookout for those two videos. So with all of that being said, I love you guys. Thank you for your constant support and the way that you guys rock with me. Y'all are always the bomb, always and forever. So anyway, until our next video, inhale positive energy. Exhale the bullshit. Raise your glass. And have a sip. Uh, tell them I'm on my way On my way, on my way, on my way I'm on my way, on my way